Good morning and welcome to this edition of Tank Time. Well, I'm happy to report that the spawning was successful. Came out yesterday morning. The female was out and about. She had gotten the boot. And the male, to date, is still in the tube. A little honey gold. Mm. A little ram's horn snail. So he's in there guarding the eggs, fanning them with his fins. Uh, hoping he'll poke his little head out. If something goes near there, he'll chase it off. And I think the honey golds know that. Come on out and say hi. You can see a white speck all the way in the back there. That's an egg. The rest of them are on the floor. Looking outside of the camera, I can just make them out. And let's see, we have a couple of ram's horn snails here. That's my favorite cleanup crew. I've nicknamed them the Langoliers. They run around and eat everything from the past day and they make way for the new. Every time I drop, a, drop an algae biscuit down there I know right where to go. And I've done a monster job cleaning up everything. They knew exactly where to go. Mystery snails are both done for the night. honey gold. Can't wait to get you guys out of there and into the big tank. I went ahead and got some Muriophila, Muriophila yesterday. It's in the background there. Got my fingers crossed. I put some more sand back there. Give them a good root hold. And I dug my banana plant in there too. It kept falling over and it, I have this coarse gravel. So I put sand on top of it and just gave it a little toe hold. I'm hoping it'll build a penthouse like in the large tank. But it looks like you're already in for something bigger and better. Doing a lot of pacing. There's not a lot of space in here for two garamis, unfortunately. So when their time comes, and they pass quarantine, they and the banjo shall move on. Speaking of Star Trek, where is he? There he is. He finally made it to the other side of the tank. Oh, there, Mr. Honeygold, scene stealer. It's a blessing that he cannot seem to fit in these pipes. I got the bigger one in the store just for that purpose. Uh, they're scavengers. 
I saw him take one snap at a gudgeon goby and it made me a little nervous. But I've had them in the past and they're just too sluggish to catch anything. He's so slow he couldn't catch cold. Couldn't catch his own breath. And see how coarse my gravel is. There's another little langolier buzzing around. Well, there's a little melt bag yet on my cryptocorans and on my Sagittaria. I want to kick back and see what happens. The neat in me wants me to go wants me to go in there and pinch that leaf right there. I want to see what the snails do with it. Here's a nice little uh, shot of the ambula, which actually has a root. I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. Very fine white root. Hopefully the trend continues. And so far, these guys have not dislodged in any way and floated to the surface. And hopefully my Mirios follow suit. I really like them. <laughs> I gave them a quick dip in a pretty strong solution of hydrogen peroxide and untreated tap water for about a minute. I picked off all the snails first and added them to this tank. There were a few bladder snails. I was happy about that. Fed one to the puffers. And I soaked the rest for about a minute or two. Not long enough to burn the plant, but enough to kill any hitchhikers. And I added sand and plop these guys in here in the back. And I got some better looking java moss. Uh, it still isn't great, but it's got some green in it. And it's supposed to be pretty hardy stuff. So I'm going to hit and hope. Bamba appears to be growing. It also appears to be losing its lower leaves, its lowest leaves, which may or may not be natural, but I don't see any sign of stem rot or anything like that. These are stem plants which like to feed from the roots. When I put them in here, there was a lot of detritus in the gravel when I mixed it with sand. So hopefully that'll give it a bump. And it has. Where are you, pea puffers? There's the female. There she is. There's her boyfriend. There, where you are. There's a little bit of the old stuff. There's the other one, there's the other male. They have little pea puffers at the store, and they have one female. And two things stopped me from trading this uh, little beta for another female. 
one. She's awful small. She's like the size these guys were when I got them. And two, I'd have no way of quarantining her for three to four weeks <clears throat> and grow her out. So that would be tricky indeed. I gotta get in there and clean that Anubius. Meanwhile, back in this tank, there's a nice female, Gudgeon Gobi. Apparently they get pretty chubby after they eat, because they eat a lot. And they've been nibbling on this. I put an algae biscuit there last night for the snails. And they've been chewing on that. These guys like algae biscuits. So they eat till they're rotund. And then by the end of the day, they're slender again. I need to get in here and vacuum that out because I don't really want to overfeed my fish and spike my nitrates. So I'll do that today. There's a little bit of red beard growing on that Anubius leaf. I'm hoping a snail finds that and does away with it. Well, he's in there. He's definitely in there with about 30 eggs. And that'll about wrap it up for this edition of Tank Time. Hoping everybody had a nice, safe holiday. Thanksgiving. You probably still have leftovers. I know I do. Until next time, see you then.